I often state in my landscape photography productions that you can possess all the photographic technique and know-how in the world, but the final touch, that bit of magic, is fashioned by weather. I might also surprise you by suggesting that the wrong type of sun does exist, and of course snow as well. Over the years, I learnt how to work with weather patterns for what we call today best practice, but I don't pretend to understand the laws of weather and weather forecasting. Like anyone else, I consult the television weather forecast or an app on my smartphone. Before making this program, I did read the weather handbook but how much I fully understand its content is questionable. Therefore, much of my advice is non-technical, based on real-life experiences backed by a few facts gleaned from the book. The governing force in any landscape photograph is the amount of cloud cover. It can help or hinder. Cloud can increase or dissolve away, and predicting what it would do next is a tricky bit. This influences the outcome, the difference between a great or a lousy picture. The classic cloud form is cumulus, and it indicates fair weather. However, barometric pressure affects its behaviour. If low, the air unstable, cloud tends to increase, covering the whole sky and staying that way for much of the day with the prospect of precipitation. It can clear later as the earth cools down, producing a fine evening. This is known as convection, the sun heating up the landscape. The cloud build-up may not be as much over water, however, under high barometric pressure, the cloud does not build to the same degree. High pressure in winter, when the sun is less strong, the air gets trapped, impairing distant views. This we can see from Kinder Scout in the Peak District, looking towards Manchester. Much of our weather is driven across the Atlantic, high up in the upper troposphere and lower stratosphere by the jet stream. High pressure over the country rotates the air in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere, low pressure counterclockwise, but local winds within each weather system can be driven from other directions dependent on the position of the weather system over or near the UK. This also affects the type of weather we experience depending on the season. For example, Great Britain being an island has a temperate climate. In winter, when the winds blow across a narrow English channel from Europe, it is likely that London and the southeast will experience snow because the continent is colder, but in summer the reverse happens and we end up with a heat wave and possibly drought. Freak winds from across and beyond Europe can cause unusual spectacles. On the 15th and 16th of October 2017, strong winds possibly caused by ex-hurricane Ophelia moving on a northerly track west of Spain and along the Atlantic coast of Ireland blew Saharan dust over France, depositing them on the Sussex coast. It had been forecast and I was ready and waiting. A weather system driven by the jet stream will carry warm and cold fronts acting as boundaries, marking a change in weather. Both bring about a spell of precipitation and are preceded by high cloud, such as alto cumulus and alto stratus. If it is raining when you wake up, there is some truth in the weather law 
rain before seven, fine after eleven. However, it should be noted that in making this prediction, rainmakers and weather seers could in former times be burned at the stake, a law not repealed until 1959. A cold front often clears the atmosphere, particularly if it is moving a large high-pressure system out of the way that has been stationary for far too long. Whilst high pressure promises fine weather, over time heat haze can build, impairing distant views, which were not clear until a change of wind direction caused by an approaching front. The mountains of Scotland, Snowdonia and the Lake District affect local weather. Clouds form when warm air is lifted by the slope of a hill or mountain. This is known as orthographic lifting, as the wind has to go around or over a barrier. As the air rises and cools, clouds form, and if the air is unstable, rain is added to the mix. On the leeward side, the reverse happens. The clouds encounter warmer air again and disperse, and any rain will now be lighter. Furthermore, with many of our mountains to the west, moisture-laden winds from the Atlantic can create extended periods of rain in these areas. Unfortunately, it follows that what was planned to be a perfect day in the lakes can now end up rather cloudy, whereas the Eden Valley to the east on the leeward side of the Lake District could be basking in glorious sun. Another weather law states, red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning, red sky at night, shepherd's delight, and it's often true. If the weather front crosses in the latter part of the day and clears pretty smartly, the most impressive sunset is the prize, especially if residue cloud from the front is left behind. That happened here at Del Key in West Sussex. Ideal conditions for a sunrise occur the other way, in reverse. Advanced cloud heralding an approaching weather front from the west provides the right conditions for spectacular colours in the east. It is not to presume that a glorious sunrise does not herald a fine day. In fact, the reward now in the absence of cloud is the classic fireball rising from the far horizon, especially over a sea. The right sort of rain often creates stunning images. Continuous rain isn't helpful, but showers, now showers interspersed by frequent sunbreaks can be exciting. Rain can be seen in this photograph, yet the sun is shining. A few moments earlier it was sweeping across the village of Chilworth in Surrey, but the sun was not far behind, allowing the observant photographer to act quickly, capturing that magic moment. Rainbows are the ultimate prize, and when light is reflected twice by raindrops, a secondary and larger rainbow appears, which is fainter, the sequence of colours now reversed. Rainbows appear opposite the sun, but it is unlikely that you'll find a pot of gold at its end, guarded by a leprechaun. In the 13th century, many believed that by walking under a rainbow, you would change sex. Of course, the sun doesn't shine the whole time, especially annoying away from home, or on an important photo shoot, or just a holiday. Whilst I prefer a clear blue sky to 100% cloud cover, there are things the photographer can do when confronted with the latter. An open landscape is the most difficult to get right, an approach I tend to shy away from. But if foreground interest has dominant warm hues, it lifts all the colours. 
Waterfalls in enclosed locations work well in poor light, so do close-ups, and steam trains, with all the related smoke and steam adding well to an otherwise monotonous mix. Now in woodland, get rid of the sky, and if everything else fails, it is pouring with rain. I then seek the sanctuary of a church for more than one reason, or, of course, a stately home. Early morning mist is an exception. But even here, a touch of sunlight and a perfectly still day is essential. Mist often forms when warmer air over water suddenly encounters its cooler surface. Mist is tiny droplets of water hanging in the air, which form when warmer water in the air is rapidly cooled causing it to change from an invisible gas to tiny visible water droplets. Winter is the best time, but this shot was taken in August. The mist soon dispersed once the sun was up. Perfect reflections are just as magical and stunning, but again, like morning mist, also requires a perfectly still day. It should be clear that landscape photography is more than having an expert knowledge of using your camera. Weather makes or breaks a photograph, and all too often the photographer is confronted by the wrong kind of sun. Knowing what to photograph and when is the key to success, aided of course by your photographic skills. In time and with experience, you will discover many other weather variations that I haven't got the time or space to include here. On the very rare occasions you will experience a weather event that is in a class of its own. Now mine, mine was a Brocken Spectre on the summit of Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in the UK, and it was caused by the sun penetrating through light cloud. Now that, that is my shadow in the middle of the glory. And if you are in a group, you only see your shadow. This is the nearest I have achieved becoming a Saint Derek. And at 4,406 feet above sea level, I have a bit further to go, even though I paid the penance by walking the whole distance should have gone to Croke Patrick in Ireland instead, perhaps?